Hi, this is Oren Zucker, and on behalf of Dan Everts, welcome to our first Layer Monkey tutorial. Layer Monkey is a standalone script that works within After Effects that takes whatever image layers you have in your comp and arranges them in time and space, creates a camera, and generates a master control layer that makes timing and global adjustments a piece of cake. I'll be honest, this isn't going to be as easy for me as the first Type Monkey tutorials were, since that was custom built as a kinetic type generator. Layer Monkey is much more versatile. It can do kinetic type with different capabilities than the original Type Monkey, but it can also work with photos, videos, EPS files, and pretty much anything else that could be imported into After Effects. If you're familiar with Type Monkey, this isn't going to be rocket science. And since no one loves overly long tutorials, I'm not going to go over the features that were left unchanged, mainly the animation and the camera sections. But for those new to Type Monkey, I'll include those sections at the end of the tutorial for you to reference. The best way to illustrate what Layer Monkey does is to take you through a few simple projects. For demo purposes, I'm going to work with this layered Illustrator file. I've split it up into several layers with a couple fonts and an illustration in there. One thing to note is that all the fonts were converted to outlines. This was done because the space around type set in Illustrator extends beyond the boundaries of the font itself. Converting to outlines will eliminate that extra space. If you don't, it'll still work, but you'll have to go in and adjust it manually. I'm going to import the layers as a composition and have the footage dimensions set to layer size. When importing layered Photoshop files, import them as compositions with Retain Layer Size checked. A couple things to keep in mind before we start is that layers with their eyeballs turned off, lock layers, lights, cameras, nulls, guides, adjustments, and audio layers will be ignored in the building process. And all EPS files will be continuously rasterized after the build. I've created this base composition with a simple background. It's got two layers, set back and Z space at two different depths. And I used motion tile to extend the background and give it a little bit of a drift. I'll take the illustrator layers I mentioned and drag them into the comp. Other than some changes to the palette, I'm going to use the default settings for these. The first box in the UI is Layout. This controls the size, position, and rotation attributes. The first drop-down is Algorithm. There's three choices, Type Monkey, Horizontal, and Vertical. Type Monkey is what was used in the original Type Monkey script. The overall design is similar to a staircase. Every time you build it, you'll get a randomly generated layout based on that design. Horizontal lines up the text on the horizontal plane. It disables the rotation probability, but the scale variable still is in effect. Same thing for vertical. It will line them up vertically, once again disabling rotation, but keeping the scale variable in play. There's also a very cool new addition called Justify, which will resize all the layers to match the first layer in the build. It won't change the proportions, it'll just match the appropriate dimension to create consistent margins. For a justified horizontal build, each layer will be scaled to fit the Y dimensions. Justified vertical will fit the X dimensions. Selecting justify will disable the scale variable. Speaking of scale variable, this is the area that controls the difference in scale between the biggest and the smallest randomly sized layer in the build. The higher the number, the bigger the difference. If you don't want randomly assigned sizes, or rotation for that matter, you can resize and rotate your layers manually and just turn the scale and rotation variables to zero. Keep in mind that if you scale the layers before the build, that will be the starting point that Layer Monkey will build from. Animation is unchanged, so we'll save that for the end. Now I'm going to unshy the layers to show you what's going on under the hood. You'll notice that, just like the original Type Monkey, layers are paired up with control layers. But if you look down at the bottom of the comp, you'll see the original source layers have been duplicated, locked, and their eyeballs have been turned off. Don't delete these unless you don't want the ability to unbuild your comp in the future. They're reference guides for the parameters of the original layers. There's two basic types of layers we deal with, those with a time factor and those without. Those without include stills, text, solids, and shapes. They're pretty straightforward and need no special attention. Time factor layers are anything that can have time remapping applied, like video or pre-comps. 
We've added timing controls to give you some options for dealing with them. Before we go over those, we're going to go through controls that are common to all types of layers. In the Layers section, the first drop-down is Order, which refers to how the layers are sequenced in the animation. There's three options, from the top, which means the top layer will appear first, and there's Bottom, and Random. Skipping over timing controls, we get to the Palette section. The color palette is similar to the original Type Monkey but it's defaulted to off. When activated, it'll apply a fill effect to your layers with your selected colors. However, videos or pre-comps won't be affected by the fill. If for some reason you want those filled, you can do that manually after the build. Lastly, we included a new shy and lock option thanks to a suggestion by Perry Kroll. By unchecking the box, Layer Monkey won't lock or hide the layers. This will come in handy if you plan on going in and making extensive changes after the build is done. As I mentioned, timing controls are needed for any layer that has a time element to them. The controls are mainly located in the Layers section, but there is one in the Marker section too. When Layer Monkey comes across one of these layers, it automatically applies a time remap to them. The first drop-down in Timing Controls dictates where you want the first keyframe of the time remap triggered. It defaults to markers, which means it'll start playing when it reaches its marker on the timeline. The second option is at the zero point, which means no matter where it's triggered by the marker, the playback will start at zero. The video will be in progress when it's revealed. This might come in handy if you already have an edit pre-built and you just want transitions between shots. The out point gives you control of what happens at the end of the clip. It's defaulted to freeze. You can also have it run out, loop, or ping pong back and forth. The third control is hidden in the distribution section of markers. This is a new section we added and it's defaulted to evenly spaced just like Type Monkey. Marker sync is also found there as well as our time related play full clips option. When this is selected, all the clips within the comp will play out in full before transitioning to the next clip. You'll notice that the in point option is now deactivated when it's selected. Check out the user's guide for more details on this option. As with Type Monkey, adjusting timing is as simple as sliding markers. A couple of points need to be made about how the markers handle the time remap layers, though. Moving a marker will only change a transition point, it won't speed up or slow down a time remapping. If you want to do that, you're going to have to pre-comp it and do it in there. If the marker expands past the time the layer runs, then the out point effect will come into play. For example, if you have a freeze selected, when the clip ends it will freeze until the next marker triggers a transition. So that's the first pass of the basics of Layer Monkey. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more to come. Please send us over links to your work, we'd love to see it and post it on our site. I highly suggest going over some of the original Type Monkey tutorials for some in-depth techniques that apply to Layer Monkey as well. I'll include a link to that in the description area below. So that's it, what you need to know to get up and running. From Dan Eberts and me, Oren Zucker, thanks for watching and enjoy Layer Monkey. The next box is the Type Animation box. There are 18 different styles or moves that Type Monkey has to pick from. You can see this list by scrolling down the style box. By default, it's set to random, but you can select a specific style to apply to all the type by selecting it from the list. Speed indicates how fast the move takes place. There's four options to choose from, fast, medium, slow, and sloth. By default, it's set to fast. Keep in mind that changing the timing in the time control layer by moving the markers does not affect the type animation speed. It just sets it farther apart. A visual guide to each type animation style as well as the animation speed is on our website at www.typemonkey.net. The next box, the marker box, as well as the caret key command in the text box, 
is the place that manages how the markers will be laid out on the time control layer. As with any project, if you're dealing with a long composition and hundreds of markers, some thought should be put into it before starting. Would it be easier to break it into several compositions? Maybe editing the text and just using some keywords would be a good idea. There's a number of techniques that you can use before you actually start laying down the markers. Without making any adjustments, TypeMonkey will evenly space the markers over the length of the work area. If you haven't adjusted the work area, then it will use the entire composition. Using the work area controls in the timeline window is ideal for working with projects that have a fixed time span, such as a song or a voiceover. TypeMonkey will begin and end with a space, not a marker, so a lot for that when you're setting the beginning and end of your workspace. The purpose of the marker sync checkbox is to tell TypeMonkey to align the markers with an existing marker layer. Marker sync is perfect in case you've spent time adjusting the timing markers but need to rebuild for some reason. When undoing a composition, TypeMonkey will ask you if you want to save the existing marker layer. Click yes and then select that as the sync layer for your next build and then click do it. Each marker will sync up with its corresponding marker sequentially. If you don't have enough markers on the guide layer, TypeMonkey will refuse to build the composition. It's no problem to have too many markers on the guide layer, you just can't have not enough. Also, there's a few audio to marker scripts out there that will lay down a marker at every beat or several beats. These are amazing for automatically syncing music to your kinetic type. The monkey cam is the last box in the control window. This box, when selected, will create a camera that's dynamically linked to the text animation. Change the text layout and the camera will change with it. You can also create a layout that doesn't have a camera by unchecking the include camera box. The three sections that make up the monkey cam control box are movement, auto rotate, and auto frame. Movement is broken down into four options, smooth stop and go, smooth constant, linear stop and go, and linear constant. All of these are automatically in sync with whichever speed is selected in the type animation control. I won't go over these in depth at this point, but you can see what they do and reference them on our website. Auto rotate will rotate the camera with the type. This can be turned off if you want the type to rotate separately from the camera or not at all. AutoFrame keeps the type at a consistent horizontal margin from word to word. For example, the monkey cam will pull back on a long word and push in on a short one. There's four different options to choose from. Loose, medium, tight, and... You can also turn it off. Monkey cam also has an update button. So you can change settings after the composition has been generated. This is useful when experimenting with different camera moves. This tutorial focuses on how to manually adjust the timing and layout of the Type Monkey composition. Once you've created your animation, remember, if you want to see multiple variations, you can click Undo It and Do It as many times as you want. You'll notice that Type Monkey has generated a timing control layer that has markers evenly distributed over the length of the work area. Each marker is labeled with the word associated with it. You can globally adjust the timing of the entire animation by accessing the time stretch panel and adjusting it as you would any layer. But here's the cool part. Since the markers are dynamically linked to the control layers and the camera, all you have to do is slide the markers and the timing of the type and the camera will adjust along with it. Simple. I'll just adjust the timing between type monkey and kinetic type generator and After Effects, and let the monkey do it. And there you go. Introducing Type Monkey, pause, Kinetic Type Generator for After Effects, pause, let the monkey do it. To manually adjust the layout, it's easiest to unshy the layers and select the layer you want to move, rotate, or resize. Since all the words are linked, Anything that appears after the word will be adjusted with it. So we'll make some adjustments. We'll move it, do a little resizing, and rotate it. I'm going to just speed things up a little bit just to save some time. Remember, 
Since this exists in 3D space, you can also rotate it on the X and the Y axis. All right, so let's see how this looks. Okay, pretty cool. So that's it, the basics of manual adjustments. Now, you'll have a lot more control over the layout and speed in the control panels, and I'll go over those in detail in future tutorials. But those are the basics. If you've made it this far, congratulations. I'll be going through some in-depth projects in upcoming tutorials, so keep an eye out for that. On behalf of Dan Eberts and myself, Oren Zucker, thanks for watching and enjoy your Type Monkey.